so our next question that we had was uh deals with you can see grant's got an image there of a uh, of an existing pole line and the question is if if i'm a new attachment on that pole and this is a pole that say it's got a birthmark from maybe the early 2000s uh, do, do i have to meet the if i attach a new cable or new fiber to this pole do i have to meet the current code or can it meet a prior edition of the nesc grant all right, so this this is a good question. It's one we get a lot. Um, so there's a lot to think about here. This is a good example of, you know, the NESC is required. Uh, so anybody designing, constructing, operating uh, utility line needs to follow the NESC. And this is a good example of where there, a lot of things come together. There's a lot of different parts of the code to think about just to answer kind of a simple question. So we're gonna talk about a few of those different parts. Uh, the first one this question is really addressing is what's sometimes called the grandfather clause, uh, rule 013. It, it's not quite like a grandfather clause, like we think about it maybe in land zoning where there was a pig farm, zoning changes, nothing has to change for them. Uh, but it is a little bit like that. It says that uh, the first part of rule 013 says that all new installations have to meet the current edition of the code. Uh, existing installations can meet the addition when they were installed. Any addition that they've been brought up to since then, if we've done some work out there, or the latest edition of the code. So this is kind of what that question is getting at. Um, you know, rule 013B3 talks about conductors or equipment being added, altered, or replaced. Um, and when they're done, the resulting structure, the wording the code uses, uh, has to meet either that code that uh, was in effect at the time it was installed or the new code. So what does that mean if you're attaching a new fiber optic cable up there? Well, the first thing I would always say is just you meet the new code with your part of it. You don't know usually as an attaching entity uh, when that pole was installed, whether the utility is meeting that old code or they've brought it up somehow to the new code. So that the first part is just meet that new code. Uh, We'll talk about that a little bit more in a couple slides here, but um, the, the other rule that comes into this a lot is rule 214, which talks about inspection and tests of lines and equipment. So rule 214 requires we inspect our lines, make sure that there uh, aren't any problems. Uh, if there are problems, uh, rule 214A4 uh, says if they're not life-threatening, then uh, we need to be uh, designate those for correction. Maybe we have a, a maintenance cycle a year out that uh, that's going to be fixed or there's going to be some work done there. If there is a line or con uh, condition or defect, a non-compliance, then the code requires we fix that immediately. So if there's something that could endanger life or property, we have to fix that immediately. So if we're attaching a new cable up there and we see one of those kinds of uh, violations, we can't attach until that's fixed. If it's one of the other uh, there are other conditions and defects that maybe they're not threatening life or property, they're designated for correction. If we can attach, meet the code with our new attachment, we can go ahead and do that. And then that other problem can be fixed later. And I'll look at a couple, I have about three examples here at the end to kind of show you different rules that have changed and how that kind of applies to those. Uh, this is the one we referenced in the question you asked at the beginning, Malcolm, maintaining clearances and spacings in Rule 230i. Yep. So this is this is sometimes where people misapply that idea of the grandfather clause. So we've got that original installation on the top left. Everything's fine. And we've got some changes there. Sign gets built next to it. Road gets, uh, fill dirt gets brought in. Maybe the DOT or the county is building a new road. Uh, or down at the bottom right there, kind of what you were saying, if if that structure is deflected, our clearance is down. Uh, maybe we've had a big storm and we've pulled a guy loose and the poles have leaned in. Uh, we, we have to maintain the clearance required in the code. So once we find that with our inspection re required to do, we have to get it fixed. We don't get to say, well, that was there first. Just because they built that house under there, we're fine. It's not our problem. We have to maintain those clearances. Uh, the other thing as we kind of talking about this is uh, there is a process to get an official interpretation request from the code committee. Um, takes a long time. Uh, 
could be a year or two years by the time it goes through that process and comes back. But it's a good place to check if you have questions for rules. Uh, and there is an interpretation request that lines up a lot with this question. So uh, once I kind of went through and, and prepared my answer here, I checked it with that interpretation. And if you're interested in that, it's number 548. You can find that on the IEEE website. Uh, so I do have a couple uh, examples here at the end of maybe some rules that have changed or some ways to apply this. Uh, the first one here, rule, tw uh, rule 097G. Um, in 2017, they added the wording is present to that rule. So it says if a grounding conductor is present, you have to bond your messenger to it. Uh, it used to be before 2017, you had to ground four times per mile, the neutral was grounded four times per mile, and you had to bond them together throughout the system at least four times per mile, but they didn't all have to be connected to a pole ground on the pole if it was there. So in 2017, they changed that. So if that top one was there, installed before 2017, they're meeting an old edition of the code. They don't have to go out and change that just because the code changed. So we come, put another attachment there below it. That one has to be bonded and grounded. We're putting in a new one, meet the new rule, meet the 2023 code. Grounding conductor is present. There's a pole ground there. Let's bond over to it. Uh, this example is an existing clearance violation. So you can see on the left there, uh, 1311 that we have in forest land. Uh, people on horseback could be out there. Equipment could be out there. We have to meet 15 and a half. That was the answer to our question there where we're subject to truck traffic. Um, if we could attach above that, looks like there might be some room we could attach above that get our joint use clearance at the pole, maintain our clearance above ground with a new fiber maybe, new communications cable. We can go ahead and do that. Uh, we should notify the utility uh, pole owner. They'll hopefully follow up with the inspection rule 214, make sure that violation is corrected. Uh, if you do go ahead with that attachment in a case like this, no, you may have to come back. You may have to you know, transfer to a new pole if they change it out, maybe do some other make ready work so that those other violations can be fixed. Um, but we can go ahead and attach in cases where it's not endangering life or property. Yep. And then the last example, uh, if it's overloading the pole, the structural uh, requirements of the pole, then we can't attach until that's fixed. So it could be those existing two attachments, this pole's already overloaded. Uh, if that's the case, then we can't attach to that with another attachment. Uh, maybe our third, the third one there is our new one that we're looking at. That's what overloads the pole. We've got to get the pole changed out, insert a pole, whatever that make ready work is before we can attach. Uh, overloading the structural integrity of the pole isn't allowed in that. Yep. A lot of good information there, Grant. And so I'm going to uh, make sure I got it right. Uh, one of the safest options for me if I'm out there doing work or attaching a cable is just make sure the pole complies with the current NESC and I'm safe. That's probably the safest. Is that out of all that? Is that a good assumption or good statement? That's all. That's always the best way to go. If you're yep. if you're arguing about which edition of the code applies, you're usually in a lawsuit at that point. Got it. <laughs> okay. Very good.